November 29th. I'm just taking a look around today at what's been going on. Last night, uh, this the biggest volcano in the world has started to erupt in Mauna Loa, Hawaii. Here's some pictures. This is the second day of it. Erupting Mauna Loa is still erupting right now. As I do this video, the earthquakes are are still where they were yesterday. They're they're still coming on at a, a pretty fast pace. Not anything major, but but a steady flow of two and three earthquakes. Here's a webcam at the top of the the summit of Mauna Loa, and you can see the lava splashing around inside the the caldera right now. No major flows coming down any of the slopes, but over here at Zoom Earth, you can see a another plume of steam right there that's not the one that we saw yesterday that is a new one coming from the erupting volcano once again the the tallest volcano on earth in fact it's the the largest active volcano on earth is starting to liven up on the big island of hawaii coming over here to the home page of the website now, coincidentally or just synchronistically i always see things as synchronous yesterday i was just writing about and thinking about krakatoa that was, uh, if anybody doesn't know, that was this historic 19th century volcano that erupted in 1883. And I was thinking about it in the context of all these ridiculous uh, global warming, cli climate change prognostications by scientists, which are all bullshit. I mean, it, it, it's, it's simply crowd control and mass hypnosis to get everybody completely focused on a non-issue because the climate could change overnight with the eruption of something like Krakatoa in, in 1883, okay? While seismic activity around the volcano was intense in the years preceding the cataclysmic 1883 eruption, a series of lesser eruptions began on 20 May 1883. The volcano released huge plumes of steam and ash lasting until late August. And keep in mind that Mauna Loa that's, that's setting off these plumes that you just saw is the largest volcano in the world. But there are, the seismic activity has just been increasing enormously around the world. And uh, there are undersea volcanoes that are threatening to erupt. But the notion that human beings have the, the slightest bit of influence on planet Earth and, and what its fate is in terms of its fate as a uh, uh, planet, whether we're going to be hit by this Wormwood asteroid in a few years, which is predicted to arrive as well. The scientists see that coming, how close it's going to come to the U.S., nuclear war that could happen tomorrow, and the notion of spending all of this energy and putting solar panels on our roofs and, and putting diapers and uh, masks on cows and slaughtering cow herds so we can eat plant food it is nothing but a method of controlling the population. It's a eugenics program is what it is. It's called genocide. And that's what the Big Brother news media that's operating through the NWO the same players that go back to the ancient Egyptians are, are endlessly going to try to destroy planet Earth and the rule of the Antichrist in the temple in Jerusalem is all part of this. You have to be aware of ancient history all the way up through current history as one of the same thing day in and, and day out as it was in the beginning is now and ever shall be and these seasons revolve around and revolve around and revolve around the revolution well what's the revolution oh we're going to have a new revolution on the hamster wheel yeah the french revolution the american revolution this austro-hungarian empire collapse in World War I, the collapse of Europe in World War II, the collapse of America now, incidentally, in case nobody's paying any attention, the America is collapsing. I mean, I know Americans don't want to look at reality. I, it's, it's really difficult for them to see that in the global context, 
You know, on planet Earth, we're a flea. In God's eyes, um, uh, you know, he can flick America off like that in mass destruction, which we're doing to ourselves anyway. The global economy is coming apart, but America is the uh, center of the financial chaos that's coming out of the federal bank, the Fed, Federal Reserve System. They're going to shift the whole currency into a digital currency, and that way they're going to control every single person's use of, because of this global warming propaganda, all of the socialist, you know, the social justice warriors, the woke people, and all the other idiots, you know, that are, you know, newly awakened, the Russell Brands, the Eckhart Tolles, all the Oprah Winfrey's, whatever, you know, it's all the same thing. Doesn't matter who they are. It's called a global elite. They don't have to worry about it, but they want everybody else to be in a fear and panic, particularly younger people, but old idiots as well, wandering around in their hippie clothes, you know, waiting for their new uh, utopian revolution, popping their Viagra, or, uh, you know, watching their senior moments in some commercial where they're going to be in the Bahamas with Samuel Bankman fraud. Uh, that's just not in the cards. It's not in the cards for America. What's in the cards is total destruction. And Krakatoa or Mauna Loa or whatever are, are all the will of God. And if you're not in line with, with God's will and, and your purpose is just to fart and excrete and, you know, get laid and all of this kind of stuff, best of luck in the afterlife with it. It's not going to end when you take your last breath. It's just it, take it from the Buddha if you want to, or take it from uh, the Bhagavad Gita. I prefer to take it from the words in the Bible. That's what I see coming. I see the prophecies of uh, the Old Testament prophets and the New Testament prophet Jesus Christ, in the book of Revelation. That's what I see coming through. All the way through history, these prophecies have been at you. Isaiah 53, you know, 700 years before the birth of Jesus Christ, prophesied his birth. What would happen to him? Exactly. So, you know, let me read some of that, just so you get an idea. And these, this was an oral tradition, but the, the entire prophecy, the whole book of Isaiah, was found intact in the Dead Sea Scrolls about word for word. So they weren't altered later on to match what had already happened. They accurately prophesied the birth and death of Jesus Christ as the Messiah to the Jewish people. We've got these other, uh, you know, hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of years of, of fools uh, following whoever. They've got their new crazy situation going on there with how many messiahs are going to show up. I don't know. There's Schneerson is supposed to be resurrected, you know, the Hasidic messiah. And you have the... Uh, I'm never going to recall his name. I'll just call him Shlomo. Shlomo is is uh, due to, uh, you know, Benjamin Netanyahu, everybody. We're at a time when you have to, like, take what seriously that this is the trial, this is the tribulation, this is the end times. I don't know who doesn't, anybody who is is familiar with the Bible or has been pursuing God knows that this is happening. Even the prophecies of the Hopis, and, and you name it, I was reading all of the, uh, you know, the, the Gnostic peoples, let's just call them people who don't believe in God, but are Gnostics. They believe in, I don't know, the Don Juan Antonio Ruiz, or the Toltec Book of Wisdom, or, you know, these crazy Benedictine monks, with the homosexual fraternity of brothers, you know, the Freemason, uh, the Jeffrey Epstein circles, the uh, L. Ron Hubbard, 
whose whose his tomb is in New Mexico. It's close to the the uh, Jeffrey Epstein Ranch. You know, all these things are equidistant. 111 miles south on a direct line from the Zorro Ranches. Guess what? The White Sands Missile Test Site. And then you go 45 minute drive, 45 minute drive to Santa Fe. Where's that? What's in Santa Fe? The Santa Fe Institute. Who's in the Santa Fe Institute? The theoretical physicists like Murray Galman, who would go down and, and consort with his friend to relaxation time, Jeffrey Epstein, who was also interested, just like L. Ron Hubbard, just like the pharaohs of Egypt, in immortality and eugenics and this new world civilization of perfected beings. Elrond is going to reincarnate it in his temple in New Mexico, his base camp. And it's got, uh, it, it, it's fantastic. His, his, his tablets are there, they're etched, they're inscribed on, I don't know, some, some kind of metallic plates with argon gas to be preserved. So there is really a community of satanic people. L. Ron Hubbard was a best pal of a guy named Jack Parsons. Jack Parsons, guess what? Helped found the Jet Propulsion Laboratory in California. Jack Parsons was, who was he? He was a disciple of Aleister Crowley. He was in the Thelemite religion. He was a Satanist. He and L. Ron Hubbard formed a partnership, uh, along with L. Ron Hubbard sleeping with his wife or girlfriend or whatever. It's all, there's always the sexual connections. There's the uh, chi child uh, sex slaves, Epstein Ranch. The other founder of, uh, first director of the Jet Propulsion Laboratory, this is uh, NASA in California, was a guy named Frank Molina. Frank Molina's son is named Ralph Molina. Who is Ralph Molina? Well, Ralph Molina in 1986 marries Ghislaine Maxwell. That's Jeffrey Epstein's close confidant and sex slave ranch operator, Ghislaine Maxwell marries the son of the Jet Propulsions Laboratory director, pal of Thelemite Alistair Crowley. This is, he's with the real Alistair Crowley, okay? Who, practicing disciple of the real live at that time, Alistair Crowley. So this satanic lineage is not just, you know, part of one little sect here, one little sect there, and the Freemasons go back to the ancient Egyptians. You can see it on the dollar bill. I'm going to just keep hitting this. Bam, 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 because it's all in your Wikipedia, if you want to look it up. Everything I'm saying comes from, from the Wikipedia. And these scientists... I'm sure, that, I hope this doesn't shock you, but they don't have your best interests at heart. You know, with this and the lawsuits that are going on now of the side effects on soldiers taking it, just like the uh, Agent Oranges, just like the, the debris falling down and killing people with leukemia, that the first responders that rushed down into the WTC rubble, the World Trade Center rubble. And why did that other, how did the other building come down when there's a plane hitting one building? How does the building next to it come down exactly? Out of sympathy? It was so sad to see its mate collapse. How did they come down like this? I hear jackasses like Noam Chomsky, so, you know, that there's no, that, that's a conspiracy theory. Right. Well, look into some conspiracy theories. Gnome. Gnome. A garden gnome. I mean, the left, how anybody can follow. Noam Chomsky is what? Well, he's a New World Order guy, too, isn't he? Where all, where's all his money come from? At Massachusetts Institute of Technology. And what are they doing in Massachusetts Institute of Technology? Exactly. What about all of the uh, scientists 
that were working. Who were the scientists working out in Los Alamos, incidentally? Well, those would be called Nazis. They're called war criminals that were ferried over that courtesy of the Vatican Pope. So they could develop not just our scientific space program, our satellite defense initiatives, and all of this uh, military talk now that's bringing such uh, peace and happiness to the citizens of the world, but they are also developing all the chemical weapons. They're also developing all the psychedelic pharmaceutical chemicals and the synthesizing of hallucinogenic drugs. And now our psychiatrists, and aren't the same people the psychiatrists, the CIA, Aren't they the friendly, nice psychiatrists? Well, who exactly designed the program, the torture program used in Guantanamo Bay? Well, that would be the top heads of the American Psychiatric Association. So they can torture prisoners, so they can torture college students and blow their minds on LSD, and they can, the merry pranksters, Ken Kesey was in the program. I knew people like army soldiers that had been through the, the LSD thing. I went through the LSD program myself. Everybody did who was in the hippie revolution. I didn't know anybody whose minds aren't blown from that, except myself, I guess, because I, real, I got off it. Then I went back to try it again, thinking that, oh, this is good for PTSD. You go right into the realm of the demonic. You know, you go right into the, you know, right into the Benedictine monastery, right into uh, Rinpoche, right into Buddhism, right into, you know, occult religions, right into Hindu gods and goddesses, like J. Robert Oppenheimer. Anybody know who he was? I'm sure some of you do. Well, he was a communist in the 30s. His sister was a communist. He was a communist. They want a new world order. Wherever they go, that's what it's all about, is to bring about this new world order. That's the same thing. It's right on the dollar bill. Franklin Delano Roosevelt, who's what? 33 degree Freemason, declared it at the, as part of the UN Charter. This is a new age. What's, what's the counterculture revolution with all the psychedelics all about? Well, that was a new age. What are the new religions? Oh, they're new. It's ever. It's all going to be new. Well, there's nothing new under the sun. Satan and Lucifer and this that men are gods. It goes back to uh, Sir Francis Bacon, who's the initial 16th century magician. Let's call them alchemists, and and that from from uh, he goes back to the Hermes Trismegistus. I have to just keep repeating this over and over and over again as counter-programming. Check anything I say out. I'm not just, uh, you know, hallucinating. Like you, if you're one of these people who believe you're going to have your third eye open or your chakras, you know, or your, uh, your auras aligned and your Reiki masters and your spirit bodies, and uh, yeah, you're going to be enlightened. You know, Russell Brand, he's got all his good nature. You know, just to insulate yourself, get all the symbols of all the different gods and, and goddesses through history. That's called false idol worship in, in terms of the true religion, which is that of Jesus Christ. That's the way, the truth, and the life. So who am I talking to? I'm not talking to, not the... I, most Christians aren't in line with uh, with Jesus Christ. Most Christians are in, in the same boat of, well, who are the Christians, right? Joe Biden's one, Bill Clinton's one, Hillary Clinton's one, Tom Hanks, Lady Gaga's a Christian. Melinda Gates is a Christian. She's got a crucifix upside, she's got an upside down crucifix she wears. And Bill Gates, he's a Christian. Yeah, he's out of the Epstein Ranch with Bill uh, Clinton and Bill Richardson, the three Billies. There, there are three Bills out there, okay? The Bill Trio. And Bill Richardson is named 
by Virginia Jeffrey. Who, who does anybody know who she is? Virginia Jeffrey, G I U F F R E E. I don't know how to pronounce her name, but she's the girl that was a sex slave of Jeffrey Epstein that had pictures of herself with Prince Andrew. So Prince Andrew got outed and he takes, he's the poster boy. Everybody else, you know, Bill Richards, she named Bill Richardson as well as being her. Where is he now? I don't know. Where's Bill Clinton now? I don't know. Where's Bill Gates now? Why are those bills? Why, why is there no, uh, well, you know the answer to that because the NWO protects its own. Why people follow these guys uh, is the blind leading the blind. So I'm trying to pull out whoever is blinded by the darkness that they think is light, that they're following all the money, oh, worshiping the, of the worshiping of the golden calf, worshiping of Wall Street, the bull, the bull run. They're going to have a bull. The bulls are going to be sacrificed. The red heifers, red. What's the color red all about? That's Baphomet on the breastplate of Elon Musk, like this. What's red? Roman, the red shield. What is the red shield? Well, that's German for Rothschild. Red shield. All you have to do is look at the symbology. All you have to do is see that, you know, okay, call it a conspiracy. I've got my tinfoil hat in the, you know, I'll wear that for the next YouTube video. It's coming down the pipe really fast. I mean, just like Helter Skelter. You know, you get to the bottom, you go back to the top of the slide. And who are those Beatles? Well, they're Freemasons, aren't they? Let's look at the cover of, and Freemasonry extends out to Eastern religion. It extends out to the decadent poets of the late 19th century. It extends out to all this death culture, you know, drug culture, opium smoking, hashish, the assassins, the word hashish comes from the assassins, William Burroughs, who's also on the cover of the Beatles album, William S. Burroughs, who bang, bang, shot his wife in the head from the, the, probably the distance, you know, f from what, a foot or, or two feet, and he calls it the ugly spirit. Oh, it was, a, it was an act of amateur madness. No, it was Satan. That's who, who's inhabiting uh, Joan Vollmer and who's in his wife and William Burroughs. And how does he get away with it? Well, Satan protects his own because he wants as many people as possible to come into his grasp and he'll go through the Kerouacs and the Ginsburgs and their sex orgies and their androgyny and their uh, bacchanalia. That's the God, isn't it? Pan, pantheism, the nature God. Pan, the goat God with the pipes, the Pied Pipers, like the Bob Dylans. Everybody must get stoned. Everybody must be stoned out of their mind to, to go down that road thinking they're going to reach nirvana with, with who? Mick Jagger and Keith Richards? You're going to reach nirvana tonight. And, and Santana? Who, they practice Santeria. That's voodoo. That's being possessed by spirits. Santana talks about it. Evil woman, you got to change your evil ways. It's all evil. It's a midnight in the garden of evil. In the garden of good and evil. What are we talking about? The garden of Eden. The forbidden fruit. The serpent. The lizard king, as Jim Morrison called himself. Who's dead at 27 on a heroin overdose. Supplied in Paris. Now what's going on in Paris? Well, that would be Emmanuel Macron. Manuel Macron? Let me tune you into what, what's going on with Emmanuel, our little boy Emmanuel. The Napoleon Bonaparte, because what's the French Revolution? That followed the American Revolution. That's based on, except unlike the American Revolution, where we deified our George Washington and the Freemason Ben Franklin and John Adams and Charles Thompson was the man who was commissioned to design the Great Seal. 
Novo Ordus Seclorum, New World Order. That's the intention. It's in, in, enshrined in the buildings themselves, in the phallus of Osiris. It, all you have to do is see that it's a, it's a direct replica of what? The Vatican City in Rome. And it goes to the city in London. And then it comes to uh, America. We're, we're just the revived Roman Empire. We're part of the Roman Empire, of course. We're all part of the Roman Empire in Europe. That's biblical. Anyway, let's go to Emmanuel Macron. I hope somebody's following this. I, I you know, praise God. Pray, I pray to you, God, that somebody out on the other end of, of this uh, YouTube broadcast will be brought into your spirit. Hold on a second. All right, this is my friend here, Watchman on the Wall. Everybody is a friend of mine. We are in a jungle and we have two big elephants trying to become more and more nervous. If they become very nervous and start war, it will be a big problem for the whole, the rest of the jungle. You need cooperation of a lot of other animals. Tigers, monkeys, and so on. Are you on the US and the Chinese side? Because now, progressively, a lot of people would like to see there, there are two orders in this world. This is a huge mistake, even for both the US and China. We need a single global order. OK. A single world order. They keep repeating it over and over. Do you think that they're trying to create a new world order or not? I mean, how many times? This goes back to Woodrow Wilson, right, whose vice president was for eight years and who established the League of Nations with Wilson, was a 33 degree Freemason and part of the Knights Templar in the, out of Indiana, one, in the lodges, one after another. I'm not making all this up. Look it up on the Freemason site. And it's not to implicate the Freemasons. It's simply to say that this is not consp conspiratorial talk. It's that everybody's loosely associated one way or another with this single-minded agenda in league with the dark occult forces and powers, whatever you want to call them, I like calling them Gnost the Gnostics, okay? How about the Gnostics? So, well, say, for example, who were the abstract expressionists? Well, they were communists and Gnostics and atheists. And Jack Parsons of the Jet Propulsion Lab didn't want anybody working for him that wasn't an atheist or a, or a Gnostic. They didn't want anything to do with Jesus Christ because Jesus Christ is the enemy. And that's why they're taking all over all the churches and replacing Jesus with, I don't know, you know, Santa Claus. With the Santa Claus. Uh, there's a skit, I'll, I'll sh I, I can bring that up as well from a Tim, uh, whatever his name is, one of these actors, Tim Allen. T Tim Allen, new, new Santa Claus movie where they, sa Satan is an anagram of Santa. So all the kids put their letters in the wrong sign. We love you, Satan. This is in a movie. Their, their, re, their being is perfectly they, meaning the powers. When I say they, I mean the dark powers and principalities in the heavenlies. The, the manifesting on earth now, the fallen angels, the demonic realm, is becoming transparently clear to those who will have eyes to see and ears to listen. So here, let's go back to uh, and what's and it's always a mockery or a parody of Jesus Christ, just like on the cover of the Economist magazine. Now, who's being parodied and mocked here, with walking on water and Europe's savior, with the title of Europe's savior question mark, and it shows him literally walking on water. Uh, with a lady's feet uh, hanging out of the water there. 
This is the same Emmanuel Macron who appeared on the cover of Time magazine uh, with the title of the next leader of Europe. This is also the same Emmanuel Macron who declared that he will govern like a Roman god. Like a Roman god? What is that? And Bonaparte? In the French Revolution? Where the monarchs were guillotined and the revolution ate itself? But it keeps reviving. It keeps being reborn in new guises until we have the Antichrist. Now, who's the Antichrist? It doesn't really matter. It's just that the, you know, the, the person himself doesn't matter. You can make any number of guesses. And I'm in favor of uh, holding off my own opinion because it, cha it, it changes. And frankly, I'm not, I don't see myself as being prophetic in any uh, precise way. I, the prophecy I, I'm making is that the U.S. is going to collapse. And, and that's what Americans don't want to hear. And they don't want to hear it because they're not preparing for anything except a new, you know, except they're, where, where do I move my 401k or where do I, you know, make sure I have my, uh, I don't know, defense perimeter or where do I stockpile my weapons or what, what, what paramilitary group am I going to get next to or you know, I've got to see what's, oh, well, my cryptocurrency just disappeared. I got to hold on to my job. It's money, 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 money. It's money madness. It, it's it's really money madness. I mean, it's it's the love of money that's a complete distraction. As C.S. Lewis, you know, pointed out in, in the screw tape letters, where the, the head devil is, is giving advice to the junior devil about how he's to uh, deliver his uh, subject who might have gone to a church service and become suddenly aware that Jesus Christ exists. This is the first thing you do is have him see a headline when he comes out of the church at a, at a news kiosk and be distracted by what's going on in the world. You know, if you if every day you're just you're just filling yourself with the latest news propaganda because it is propaganda, it's complete propaganda. It's a completely false narrative. I can see what's going on in Europe, for example. I can see what's gone on in, uh, and I've I've reported this just over and over and over to nobody's to to uh, people around me to not being believed, even though it's it's obvious. It's been obvious for five months that Ukraine's lost the war, but we'll have nonstop reporting about the war crimes, the Russian war crimes, and Putin is uh, insane, and he's uh, falling to pieces, and he's lost in Kherson, and now he's trying to nurse his wounds. And, and meanwhile, there, he's bomb, he's, it's rope-a-dope. He has a, a troops... Ukrainian troops moved into Kherson, and now he just shells them from across the river from the heights. So they just get slowly massacred, and all the lights are out. And the mayor of Kiev, who's a boxer, he's like Rocky, it is a brother who looks just like him. They're sons of a, a Russian general. And and uh, the mayor of Kiev and Zelensky are in a uh, angry, they've always hated each other, so they're in an angry war of blame. Zelensky is blaming Kiev's mayor for not having enough uh, centers to take care of people when the lights are out. And it turns out that Zelensky's uh, wrong. So the, the mayor of Kiev is doing the best he can under the circumstances, and he's do, you know considering, where's Zelensky exactly? <laughs> off, off on a uh, summer uh, weather vacation with uh, Sean Penn in Malibu. Is it Sean Penn's giving him a, uh, awards. Oh, is there, does he have a photo shoot at Vanity Fair? Or is he up there in Nantucket with uh, Thanksgiving for Joe Biden's uh, celebrations? While well, Thanksgiving is being protested, of course, by the leftists who, who it's a celebration of the genocide of the Native American Indians. Meanwhile, this is interesting. Five cars blew up. Uh, let me get a picture of that. 
Okay, this is Franchot Pearson's uh, site, website. This is what happened a uh, day after Joe Biden left uh, his Thanksgiving celebration in Nantucket with a, some multimillionaire equities trader, who knows. You know, it, it must be... Uh, it must be nice. Hertz rent a car video. Hertz rent a car secret service vehicles burst into flames the day after Biden left Nantucket, which is in Massachusetts. Why is this happening? Don't you find that kind of strange? I'm sure you do. Now, what's going on with Macron is he's heading the, he's unifying Europe under himself. And, and who's left out of this is, is America. America is persona non grata. It's made enemies with uh, primarily the worst enemy that America's made is uh, the Arab oil countries and uh, OPEC, which, which uh, Russia is a member. So keeping everything in mind, this couldn't be the, mo the, the most uh, uh, maladroit, that's a good word, the maladroit administration in American history. It's not even on the charts in terms of incompetence. You, I don't think you can find anywhere of any American administration that's ever been this incompetent. Nay, but it's also important to remember that this is the Obama administration. Biden is just sitting, uh, you, you know, it's just a place marker for the Obama-Clinton administration. It's the same players, Janet Yellen and the Federal Reserve people and the military and the CIA. And the, it's the permanent government. And this they've put this uh, destructive uh, plan in place. All of this is going according to plan. People might think that uh, there's no uh, logic or there's no rationale to what the Biden administration is doing. Well, there certainly is. It's to completely destroy the economy. And that's exactly what's happening. And, and, and it's also putting us in this position vis-a-vis -vis the oil countries. Is now gone to the dogs. Tensions between the U.S. and its Arab allies are at an all-time high as the latter no longer advances U.S. interests. As rising fuel prices are the last thing the U.S. wants during this election season, a desperate Biden attempted everything to get OPEC-plus countries to increase oil output. But as I said, Arab nations no longer serve U.S. interests but their own. So a frustrated Biden warned its allies of dire consequences, and that is exactly what it is doing right now. A few weeks ago, it was reported that UAE, a key US ally, sent its national security advisor on a secret mission to Saudi Arabia in September to convince OPEC de facto leader not to cut oil production quotas. In a discussion with Saudi Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman in Riyadh, the UAE's Sheikh Tanun bin Zayed Al Nahyan urged against a cut, saying it would risk a political reaction and was economically unjustified. However, as reported, Saudi Prince Mohammed was unmoved. Saudi officials reiterated that the production cut wasn't political, but an economic necessity, not just for Saudi Arabia, but for the global energy market. UAE did try to echo Washington's voice. However, it has earlier defended the decision by OPEC and its allies to cut oil production. According to Energy Minister Suhail al mazuri the UAE thinks that when OPEC Plus decided to decrease production targets, it did so in the right technical direction. So this stance and the UAE's failure to advance US priorities do not bode well with Biden and it appears that this was his last ditch effort to win over OPEC nations. UAE had already given a frustrated Biden a good reason to sulk, but now it has gotten another one. A new classified US intelligence report states that the UAE has engaged in an extensive effort to influence US political decisions. 
The Washington Post reported that the UAE's effort include legal and illegal measures to try to influence the country's foreign policy in ways that would benefit the UAE. The report found that the UAE worked throughout multiple administrations to take advantage of vulnerabilities in the US government. It adds that the UAE has spent more than $150 million on lobbying since 2016 and hundreds of millions more on donations to US universities and think tanks, many of which create papers that support the UAE's interests. Well, it's pretty big blame and it's the timing of the report that should be noted. The already deteriorating relations could now take a complete nosedive with such a development. What impacts could it have on the US-UAE relationship? Well, first, the UAE has already disregarded Biden and shown solidarity with Russia over the alliance with the United States. Such a measure will ensure that the USA's crucial allies completely switch their allegiance. One won't be surprised if things get worse and Biden's next move is to impose sanctions against the UAE, a nation that has based its entire economic and diplomatic structure on the flow of trade, finance, people and information. If any decision by Biden hampers the UAE's economic ambitions, Biden will further throw them into discontent. All of the and what's the upshot of this exactly in terms of what effect it's going to have on the health of the American economy? What Biden is going to alienate all the oil suppliers. Venezuela has given him the cold shoulder when he went begging for oil there. Oh, but, you know... Uh, We've cut off our own oil supply. Canada doesn't has cut off their own oil supply. The New England states, it's been announced, have are going to have rolling blackouts. So my big question is, what's going to happen in America when we're going to have what tripled uh, energy costs? I don't know what they're going to be, but we're selling our the liquid natural gas. It's it's war profiteering by the corporations that have put these administrations, the Congress people. I'm not talking, I'm not centering my anti-government, if you want to call it that, uh, diatribe, if you want to call it that. I'm not centering it on the Biden administration. I'm saying the entire ruling elite don't give a damn about what happens to the citizens who go and, and elect them. As a... Uh, Rahm Emanuel said about the progressives who elected Obama and himself into office, he said the progressives were effing retarded. That's a quote, except he used the full word. So why are they effing retarded? Well, they expected they were going to carry out their campaign promises. So after eight years of not carrying out, they, they're elected time and time again because they know that the progressives are effing retarded. You know, all you have to do is tell them they're going to get uh, socialist uh, debt forgiveness and all these other things. Well, the only reason they're giving debt forgiveness to students, right, is to print all these dollars so they can get, inject money into the economy. Somebody's got to spend money or we don't have an economy. So they just print more and more bills, and what is that causing? It's causing record inflation. And what did the vice president of the uh, vice chair of the Federal Reserve just say today? Oh, there's no end in sight to the inflation. So they're in, they're in you know, oh, we're stopping inflation. Oh, we're going to, you know, who in the, what, what was a third grader believe this kind of stuff coming out of the Fed? Of course they do, because they believe that you know, cryptocurrencies are, are making fortunes with uh, the cryptocurrency industry is collapsing, the contagion is spread, another company declared bankruptcy today. Uh, who knows how far it goes because all kinds of pension funds and who know, you know, T o T Ontario Teachers Union pension funds were, are in these things. What, what was uh, Bankman Fried doing exactly? Well, he was just like a bank. That's why he's called the bank man. 
he sets up a phony, a dummy corporation with his girlfriend as the chief executive officer. And she looks like, I don't know, some kind of dopey nerd from, you know, that you knew in, in high school or something, a science nerd. She, she's talking about she doesn't even do basic math. So she's probably good and bad. I mean, that seems to be the whole, uh, you, you know, people were hired on the basis of their sex, sex slave attributes. She's talking about being on how great amphetamines are and how much better you are than normal people when you're on amphetamines. Just like Jack Kerouac. I mean, just like Adolf Hitler. That's what yeah. Adolf Hitler and the Panzer Brigades were on. A concoction of, oh, just like the kids on Ritalin. What's Ritalin? Just like all these kids on six packs of red. Yeah, you're, you're doing a great job. You're real focused. They're focused on their video games. Folk us. We've been folk us. We, 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 we're like a country of high school students on crack, like uh, Jordan Belfort. I saw this, you know, who, know, who Jordan Belfort is? Belfort is. He's uh, for whom the bell farts. He's uh, the Wolf of Wall Street that everybody loves so much, Leonardo DiCaprio, who's who's so concerned about global warming. I mean, they really, I mean, that's that's what Hollywood is really all about. That's why they, you know, are so conscious about how much energy they use and how many islands they own. Like in the Bahamas, how many multi-million dollars, how much energy do you think uh, these kids are using, you know, in their millionaire mansions that they bought with, guess what? investors' money, who, who they put it in, in the Caroline S. Ellison Bank. Is she related to Larry Ellison of uh, Oracle? I don't know. I, I can hardly keep track of all the connections here. Somebody uh, pinched me. I think I'm dreaming. No, it's all part of the same thing. Like I say, you know, I've seen the movie before, and I've seen how it ends. I was around for the 08 crash. And I was following it then. I was following it with the same people, Michael Burry, Mr. Big Short. And Mr. Big Short sees that there's going to be an epic crash. Just it's, called, it's Margin Calls. There's a movie you should check out called Margin Call with uh, Jeremy Irons. But it shows that it's a domino effect, that once these companies have to start selling off their asset and pay, pay back their investors, there's nothing in the bank. There's... There's, you know, the backstoppers, the insurance companies, AIG, that collapsed. Lehman Brothers collapsed. So what, what, what was the big solution by Barack Obama and all the other, you know, Larry Summers and Tim Geithner and all the other players who they put the same people back in charge that had created the meltdown in the first place. So they just rig up a bigger Ponzi scheme. You just bring more and more... Because Americans are never going to, you know, if you see a cryptocurrency scam uh, with some kid in his jockstrap uh, sitting on a beanbag chair with, a, you know, a virtual reality helmet on, that, that's a guy that Americans go to to uh, make, make a million bucks. Because he's, he's these are the kind of geniuses that, that MIT produces or, or Yale or Harvard. Sorry, I, I, I don't mean to laugh, but, you, you know, I'm not going to. I'm laughing just to keep from crying. This is my energy drink. I'm going to I'm going to I'm going to get a company to see if I can patent it and sell it down down in uh, the description box next month. It'll have something in it like uh, cocaine, like Coca-Cola had. That was <laughs> Yeah, it's a great, and that's what Sigmund Freud used. That, I mean, that's how he figured out that uh, the source of the neuroses in women was in their nose. That that was uh, that's where all the hysteria came from, and so he operated with Willem Fleiss uh, on one of his patients. Uh, you know, to operation after operation. You know, the nosum. You know, the nose is where the, is the root of the neurosis. Makes sense to Sigmund Freud on cocaine, but that's all forgotten. I mean, he's a scientist after all. That's how they figure out 
uh, all these things that, that that are you know where they really get down to the like Karl Marx. He's another scientist. And what can I say? You know, if you don't believe me, I just suggest you uh, read the New York Times because that's the source of unimpeachable truth. And things are going really fantastically in with the oil companies and the oil countries. I mean, they're record profits. It, they're, they're just going to be doing great up in New England this winter. They'll have rolling blackouts and jack the prices way up while they're selling the LNG to where else but Europe and Emmanuel Macron over there who's uh, heading the new world order now that uh, somebody has to because obviously the U.S. has lost its marbles and they can't be trusted according to Deutsche Bank and that's what the chairman of Deutsche Bank just said don't invent whatever you do don't form a relationship with American banks they're untrustworthy and also NATO saying, don't form alliances with uh, the U.S. They're untrustworthy. Look at how we've ended up going into this war against Russia. So the credibility of, the, of America and the rest of the world, I don't know who I'm talking to, but like I say, if I'm talking to other Americans, I have to inform you that your credibility as Americans is shot. It's just down the tubes because uh, everybody's... Look, if you're with another government, right, if you're in Europe and your citizens are screaming and say, what the hell happened? Are you going to say it's my fault? No, you're going to say, they told us to do it. Well, why did you follow them? It's not our fault. Joe Biden says to, said to you know, send all our, our uh, weapons and, and my, all your money and, and weapons to, uh, to def defeat the Russians. <laughs> Who believed that shit? I don't know. They must have been listening to... Uh, Superman, or uh, oh, that's what they are. Oh, they're at Disney World. That's where the French are. They they go to Disney World, and their favorite movie director is Clint Eastwood and Jerry Lewis, of course. <laughs> they're sophisticated like that over in France, super sophisticated, and they've got Roman Polanski over there, and uh, Ghislaine Maxwell actually had a chateau. This is one one of these things that's interesting to me. You know, I don't know if it interests anybody else, but but it's because Lynn Maxwell had a chateau over there in France. Oh, she why is she hanging out? Where was she in Rhode Island or something? So she gets arrested. It's like she doesn't know that the you know, I mean, you, why didn't you walk into a police station? <laughs> because surveillance is, is so sophisticated. I, it's, uh, th these are one of these things that that uh, you know, I think that it's uh, like a foregone conclusion that all of these criminals are going to be put to uh, into jail or they're going to kill themselves or they're going to be killed or they're, they're going to kill each other off. Look what happened to Robert Maxwell, the magnate who sired uh, Ghislaine and her daughter who was married to the son of Frank Molina. When Frank Molina was the director of the Jet Propulsion Lab, NASA's Jet Propulsion, Repulsion and Propulsion Lab, and pals with uh, Jack Parsons, the uh, Thelemite, uh, Alistair Crowley. Have I repeated myself enough? Does anybody think what I'm saying is true? <laughs> Look it up, man. Look up Jack Parsons. Somebody get on the case, you know? Somebody get on the case out there, you know, because like I say, I've already figured out what's going on. And if you're not going to believe me, then you know, believe the New York Times, like I say, or Jeff, better yet, Jeff Bezos, the Washington Post. Washington Post is a source of unimpeachable truth. I mean, they've been telling the truth for so many years now, along with the CIA. I'll give you a good example. It's Ben Bradley. Anybody know who Ben Bradley is? He was the editor there, the chief chief editor at the New York Post, that, that uh, the intrepid Bob Woodward and Carl Bernstein found deep throat because uh, following the money. Well, Ben Bradley was, was a good pal of James Jesus Angleton. It's, it's not Jesus, it's Jesus. And James Jesus Angleton was a lefty. He, he published these, uh, these uh, bohemian avant-garde news little news magazines in Paris. 
that published James Joyce and T.S. Eliot and Ezra Pound. So he's one of the fathers of modernism and also the head of the CIA and also best pals with Ben Bradley of the Washington Post. Well, JFK, John Fitzgerald Kennedy, who's the son of Joseph P. Kennedy, incidentally, who's best pals with uh, Franklin Delano Roosevelt, incidentally. And, you know, they all formed, what was that thing called again? Oh, the United Nations. Yeah, the United Nations, where it was uh, the New World Order, as, as translated by Franklin Delano Roosevelt, the 33-degree Freemason, who went to school, who went to Columbia's law school with Wild Bill Donovan. Three guesses as to who Wild Bill Donovan is. Well, Wild Bill Donovan was a Catholic like James Joyce, probably a Jesuit, I imagine, because Jesuits are knee-deep in this kind of stuff, intrigue and skullduggery and what have you, like skullduggery is in skull and bones. Anyway, what's his name again? Wild Bill Donovan. Was kind of a mediocre student, but and he went to school, law school, with uh, FDR. They didn't know each other, of course, because they run in different social circles, like FDR is the, the elite banking class. And uh, Wild Bill was a uh, poor Irish working class guy. But anyway, you know, he managed to rise through the ranks and become the first chief intelligence officer during the Second War when opportunities are ripe for intrepid young men like himself. He became the head of the Office of Strategic Services. And what was that? Well, it was the first iteration of the Central Intelligence Agency. It changed to the Central Intelligence Agency. Because they keep morphing. It's like League of Nations becomes the United Nations. And now, what do we have? We have uh, the World Economic Forum and the Global Initiative and the Bilderberg Group. That was uh, came about in 1954, the year of my birth. Maybe it was the year Stalin died. I don't know. I have to keep these. I have to look these things up. Well, what else can I say? Let me let me look around and see if there's any. I, you know, I'm I'm sure that that uh, I could go on for for just hours and hours recounting my LSD trips <laughs> with Marxist revolutionaries and my high school, who uh, you know were wearing their headbands. And following who else but Jane Fonda? I mean, because if there isn't a, a great left-wing Marxist revolutionary, it's got to be Jane Fonda. Until she married Ted Turner, 33-degree Freemason, incidentally. Not, not that anybody's looking into it that deeply. And, of course, head of a, a media company, because where else do they hang out? Like Robert Maxwell, the father of Ghislaine Maxwell who was a media magnet and a fraudster, and he was also a great supporter of nobody less than Nikolai Ceausescu. Anybody know who he is? Well, Nikolai Ceausescu, excuse my pronunciation and my lack of facility with the English language, but Ceausescu was one of the mur most murderous East European communists and ran Romania like, like Pol Pot ran Cambodia. And Robert Maxwell was his greatest pal and, and referred to him in an interview by saying, it's well known that you're loved by the Romanian people. What do you, how do you account for that? <laughs> Master Ceausescu. There's also a guy named Richard Wormbrandt who was tortured in the regime of, uh, in the prisons of Nicolae Ceausescu in Romania. And Romania, incidentally, is, is one of the countries that wants to fight against uh, Russia because they're fervent communists and, and Russia is a capitalist country now. It gets really confusing. So I, I'm sorry if, if I'm going too fast because it's, it's very confusing. But you have to realize history is that uh, there are Nazi battalions <laughs> In, under the command of a Jewish comedian named Zelensky, who uh, just just can't wait to to run to the front and get decimated by uh, 
Putin's military, the Azov Battalion, they even have their, their Nazi insignia that unfortunately got caught in a photo op with, with Zelensky. So that, that, that caused a little bit of a, didn't cause much of a stir because the Western media just doesn't report on these things. They don't report on the history of the Ukrainian war. They don't report on anything that has to do with actual history. And the, the West, the West, by and large, like if you're the French or the, the Germans, I don't know what they're into besides, uh, well, S&M, kind of Berlin kind of stuff that they've always been into and the French are gay Paris. Is Paris burning? It's going to be, you know, I mean, it was burning, uh, burning, 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 like, like Disco Inferno. And it still is. So this Disco Inferno is like Dante's Inferno. And it's getting hotter and hotter and times are, are really getting close to the end. Where was I with Ceausescu? Richard Wormbrandt was tortured for bringing Bibles to Christians in Romania. And he wrote two books on because he researched the fact in the archives and in Marx's correspondence and letters and everything else from the mid-19th century forward, that Karl Marx was a Satanist. He became a Satanist. He was a Satan worshiper when he was in college. He's a Jew. His father was Orthodox religious, and who knows what happened? You never know exactly, but Engels became a Satanist as well. Lenin's a Satanist. You look at Stalin. You look at... Uh, Lavrov, I mean, Neberia, the, the head of the KGB, the head of intelligence, the t you know, child uh, molester, everything else. Evil, the heart of evil. That's what Marxism is. It's an evil that's spreading across the world. That's the specter of communism. And it's satanic. And the new world order is the order, is the rule of Satan. It's Satan's kingdom on earth. It's being established. It's been established, as Jesus said. As, you know, if you read your Bible, the, this, is God, this is the kingdom of Satan. It's not the kingdom of God. The kingdom of God, where's that? It's within. So you always have the option of departing and not participating in this debauchery and decadence and destruction in days of Sodom and Gomorrah. And so God bless everyone. I hope everybody st stays safe. I hope everybody will try reading some scripture. I mean, at least get, have a passing interest in, in finding out for yourself what's in Scripture and letting that Scripture speak to you rather than going through an intermediary. I can't stress this enough. I mean, I've been, I've been through 50 churches, and the only time I came to God was on my own and, and not going through these con artists and communities. And, you know, you're worshiping your pastor, or you're worshiping your congregation, or you're worshiping your religion, or you're worshiping the Pope, or you're worshiping, the, you know, the bishops of the Pope, or you're worshiping, you know, power. You're worshiping, the, you're kissing the ring, like Bob Dylan kissing the ring of the Pope, or Andy Warhol kissing the ring of the Pope, whoever kissing the ring of the Pope. Well, the Pope, I'm calling the false prophet. I think this, this Pope is the false prophet. And he'll be, along with Macron's New World Order, and, and that, that's the revived Rome, and America is, is part of it as, the, as Babylon, mystery Babylon, the whore of Babylon, that's provided all of this porno and sex insanity and drug insanity and power insanity and money insanity and thinking that uh, there's no God, there's no Jesus, there's just uh, uh, we're gods and here they are. And it's Trump too, 
you know, there they are. Netanyahu, Trump. Who's this? I don't know. Like I say, uh, these historic agreements are agreement, agreements to bring into power a one world government under the direction of the Antichrist in the temple in Jerusalem, the rebuilt temple. Somebody's got to like wake up to this who's going down that road. If I can wake up one person or two people or anybody at all, because all my friends are in this uh, cauldron of hip hop, bebop, Baba Lubao Mao and uh, uh, Acid Rock and Punk Anarchy in the UK. I'm an antichrist. I'm an anarchist. You know, I'm going to get pissed. I'm going to destroy. It's all black. It's all uh, pe people taking, you know, Sid Vicious, uh, heroin overdose administered by his mother after stabbing to death. His girlfriend is Nancy Spungen. Where else but the Chelsea Hotel where Leonard Cohen and the Warhol crowd are hanging out and Bob Dylan has a, a woman who allegedly said she was a sex slave of Bob Dylan kept in the Chelsea Hotel. And she, oh, she suddenly disappears, but she's got a lot of, she drops her case after getting a big payoff. There's more to say about Bob Dylan, incidentally, in that uh, Victoria's Secret advertisement he did in Venice with inside the, you know, with the uh, woman showing her bottom, you know, close up, wearing the, the angel wings, and there's the rosette, the Rosicrucian crosses in the background inside the church, and Dylan talking about selling his soul to the devil, and Les Wexner. Is Victoria's Secret, and isn't that a reference to Queen Victoria and her vagina, Victoria's Secret, you know, because it's all this crotchless underwear and SM and bondage domination, and all the women are uh, looking like prostitutes, like Madonna with her Berlin out leather outfits now with her rear end exposed under the bed, or she's there's one with her buttocks that, that she's sitting above a Red Hot Chili Peppers, you know, and that's her boyfriend, Red Hot Chili Pepper himself. Well, do I go into this stuff? It flashes on, on the screen and that, you know, just enough till I get the message and bring it to those who can see what this is and see, see how dark this is, see how evil it is, see how, what I came out of myself, see how demonic it is, see that the demonic is real, see that the satanic is real, see that the Egyptian pharaoh, pharaohs and the power of that, those religions are real and they manifest and they're manifesting now and how dangerous they are, and that you have to uh, turn them on and be uh, safe in Christ, because that's the only safety there is in this, in this uh, darkening and collapsing uh, crisis that the world's in. It's not going to get any better. It's not going to get... You know, it, it's just going in one direction. All civilizations go in one direction. When they start to go down, like Rome, you don't suddenly go to Caligula and then Julius Caesar returns. And the Constitutional Republic before him that was collapsed. And there's just no... Uh, there's no reversing the direction of the Titanic going down. And we have just gone to, from one disaster to the next and tr to putting it off and putting it off and putting it off. Printing money and printing and money and printing money and creating one scam after another. Robert Maxwell was a fraudster. 
you know, the Maxwells are fraudsters, the, the newspapers are frauds. Everything's a big lie. It's the empire of lies. Don't believe them. God bless. Over and out.